Ford has reinvented its range of pickup in this fourth generation form with extra attitude and an activity orientated vibe that really suits it. It's more car light where it counts, inside, but a proper pickup in terms of cargo capacity, torque and traction. Want a truck? We think you'll want one of these. Think of a pickup and Ford is a name you just can't ignore. The company represented in this growing segment since the turn of the century by this tough, versatile Ranger model. This fourth generation design targets the growing lifestyle part of the pickup market more directly than ever before, while still keeping the tough capability that will appeal to business operators. Globally, Japanese brands still rule the pickup sector, but Ford has the longest heritage in this segment with light truck sales that have run into their millions stateside. Even the company's very first Model T back in the early 1900s could be bought in small truck form with a closed cab and a flat deck at the back. In those times, and right up until the end of the last century, vehicles like these could happily be as rough as they were tough. No longer. These days, the lifestyle part of this market is more important than the section of it that appeals to farmers and construction site workers. And the Ranger model line was created in direct response to that customer shift, launched in its rather crude original form back in 1999, when it replaced the previous rather half-hearted Cortina and Sierra-based P100 pickup models. That first Ranger was facelifted in 2002, but the second generation model of 2006 was a much better effort, updated in 2009. But that contender still couldn't properly compete with the pickup class leaders, until in 2012 Ford replaced it with a third generation model that did. That model sold well thanks to a major upgrade in 2015 and the introduction of a new powertrain in 2019. And by the time of this fourth generation model's introduction here in late 2021 was the undisputed class sales leader. Mind you, the Rangers had less and less competition in recent years. Mitsubishi, Nissan, Mercedes and Fiat have all deserted this segment in recent times, thanks to sales numbers that even Ford can't justify for development of a completely new product. So, this Mark IV version shares most of what really matters with the second generation Volkswagen Amarok, though Ford led the engineering of this design. This Ranger, after all, a key model for the Blue Oval brand. It accounts for nearly 40% of the European pickup market, but it's also very much a global product, designed and engineered in Australia, built in South Africa and Thailand, and featuring a new three litre turbo diesel assembled in Dagenham, part of a design versatile enough for export to over 180 countries. Perfect in principle, not only for core pickup customers like farmers, plumbers and jobbing builders, but also for the self-employed private people increasingly wanting a vehicle like this as a lifestyle accessory. To find out more, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. It seems rather contradictory to the kind of utilitarian thing a pickup perhaps ought to be, to swing up behind the wheel of this one and find yourself faced by an unapologetically large dose of digital screen tech. But you're still seated commandingly, and there's a familiar diesel rumble from beneath the long bonnet ahead of you when you fire up your choice of diesel power plant prior to which the striking Ranger instrument screen graphics are replaced by a rather unnecessary built tough ad message on the instrument screen which you'd quickly tire of after a bit. None of the black pump fueled engines on offer are troubled by modern electrification, but in other areas this Ford claims to have evolved and you'll get a feeling for that if the version you've chosen is an automatic. It's 10-speed transmission marshalled by this unusual short throw e-shifter. So, what's in store here? Conventionality or originality? Let's see. 
First impressions will depend on whether you come to this pickup from an SUV or from another pickup. If the former, you'll find it as clunky over speed humps and potholes as pickups always will be thanks to the tough ladder frame chassis and utilitarian leaf sprung rear suspension that all mainstream ranges feature and the heavy weight. Uh, this may be classified as a light commercial vehicle, but in this well-equipped double cab form it weighs in at getting on for 2.4 tonnes and it is on average a good 100 kilograms lardier than Toyota's Hilux, which is perhaps its most obvious rival. But most pickup regulars won't be expecting this Ford to feel like an SUV and these people will immediately note after the first half mile that the steering isn't as slow as it usually would be in a truck and the body roll is better controlled than it normally would be in a vehicle of this type. The ride's a bit better this time round too thanks to the way that the rear suspension dampers have been shifted outboard of the frame rails. Ford it seems still knows a thing or two about R&D dynamics. The Blue Oval brand clearly took the development lead there, but Ford's Australian Product Development Centre, who mainly engineered this Mark IV model, had to listen to project partner Volkswagen when it came to engines. VW insisted on there being a V6 diesel in the range, and not something Ranger customers will be used to. Uh, the biggest engine in the previous Ranger was a rather unusual 3.2 litre inline five cylinder diesel. Now that's replaced here on upper range models by a 3 litre diesel V6 with 240 PS, a lovely cultured growl and 600 newton metres of torque marshalled by a 10 speed automatic gearbox and capable of rest to 62 miles an hour in 8.7 seconds on the way to the 112 mile an hour top speed that all rangers share. It makes the Ranger feel like a bigger, slightly more exclusive kind of truck, but in truth it's a unit probably better suited to the Volkswagen Amarok that runs down the Silverton South African production line alongside this model. The vast majority of Ranger customers though will be choosing between Ford's offered range of proven single turbo and bi turbo two litre inline four cylinder diesels. The single turbo 170 PS unit is the engine you'll need if you want manual transmission or the single cab body style with your Ranger. Uh, here though we're trying the bi turbo power plant that you're more likely to want which puts out 205 PS and can only be had with the 10 speed auto we mentioned earlier. Now as the engine name suggests this gutsier four cylinder diesel has two turbos with a smaller variable geometry high pressure turbo there to supply instant response while the larger fixed geometry low pressure turbo spools up. As a result there's nearly as much torque as the V6, 500 newton meters of it and in this form the Ranger makes 62 mile an hour from rest in 10 and a half seconds just over a second quicker than the single turbo variant. Now 10 ratios are a lot for the transmission to deal with but it handles them smoothly and certainly feels a lot more direct than the six speed auto that you get in a comparable Toyota Hilux. You can lock it into a chosen gear by pressing the M button on the side of the E selector. Refinement with this bi turbo engine isn't quite as commercial vehicle like as it is with this single turbo model, but there's the usual diesel rumble and at idling and town speeds, it certainly doesn't set any new class standards for refinement. On the highway though, uh, there's really not that much more noise than you'd get from many large SUVs, which is quite impressive given this Ford's boxy dimensions. Ford has developed a couple of four-wheel drive systems, a basic electronic shift on the fly set up for more affordable Ranger models, or the more advanced full-time four-wheel drive system with a set and forget mode for the top automatic variants, including the volume wild track version that we're trying here. 
avoid base XL trim and you get some basic drive modes uh, normal eco slippery and a tow haul setting that you'll need to maximize the 3500 kilogram brake towing capacity that most variants offer the more advanced full-time e four-wheel drive system that we're trying here adds a terrain management system which on this wild trap model is controlled by this rotary dial between the seats a twist of this and you've access to a couple of extra drive modes uh, there's mud ruts which maximizes drive off grip and keeps the tire tread clear of mud and sand which optimizes power delivery and gear shifting to maintain momentum in sand and snow in the center of the dial are your main drivetrain buttons uh, 2h 4h low range 4l and the set and forget for a auto four-wheel drive setting now we haven't yet told you that much about the top raptor version and we're not going to go into great detail about it here because that model's covered in our separate review if you'd like to check that out this flagship model's key attribute is a set of dampers developed by US motorsports specialist Fox which feature what's called live valve technology are adaptive for compression and allow this top truck to float over lumpy surfaces at speed under the Raptors bonnet the emphasis this time around is on a twin turbo 3 litre EcoBoost V6 petrol engine uh, tuned by Ford Performance to produce 292 PS and a thumping 491 newton meters of torque. This unit features a race bred anti-lag system first developed for the Ford GT supercar and of course it sounds hugely better than the previous 210 PS 2 litre diesel which continues for those still wanting it. There are steering wheel mounted buttons to alter the feel of steering, suspension and exhaust. The latter offering the choice of quiet, normal, sport or Baja settings. Once you've programmed in what you want, another R designated steering wheel button delivers your chosen My Mode combination of drive settings instantly. The Raptor also has a trail control mode and a locking front differential too for really gnarly terrain. While referencing minority interest Ranger models, we should also mention that you can also ask your dealer about a PHEV Ranger model, which combines a 2.3 litre EcoBoost petrol engine with an electric motor and a rechargeable battery system. When fully charged, a rather unremarkable EV range of up to 28 miles is promised. But let's get back to the mainstream Ranger lineup, which is our focus here. Ford reckons this fourth generation model is a more capable thing off road thanks to design changes made to the ladder frame chassis which included extra reinforcement, uh, fresh mounts and placing the rear dampers outboard of the frame rails to increase articulation. Plus the front wheels have been moved 50 millimeters further forwards extending the wheelbase and improving the approach angle rated at 30 degrees the departure angle is up to 23 degrees and the ramp breakover angle is up to 21 degrees uh, both figures fractionally worse than a competing Toyota Hilux there's a tilt angle of up to 25 degrees and thanks to a ground clearance figure of up to 237 millimeters in this double cab model a maximum wading depth capability of up to 800 millimeters that's 100 millimeters more than a Hilux a selectable off-road section of the SYNC 4A center screen can display all off-road features including predictive guidance lines over the front camera's live feed Plus, you can view pitch and roll angles and lock the rear differential. You can also get a low set camera that will help you see forwards when climbing a steep hill. And there's a selectable off-road readout in the instrument screen that briefs you on off-road status and power distribution. Should you still get stuck, there are dual recovery hooks at the front and at the back of the vehicle. And this wild trap version gets specially engineered underbody protection that helps shield vulnerable components like um, the fuel tank, uh, the steering, the sump and the transmission. 
obviously you're not going to be driving your Ranger in the wilds all that often so it's probably more pertinent to finish with some extra notes about how it fares in the urban jungle. As we mentioned earlier uh, you'll certainly feel poorer tarmac services though you're better off than you would be in most rivals and things are slightly better in that regard with the so-called soft ride suspension system fitted though that only features on this wild track variant. The 12.9 meter turning circle can make this pickup a bit of a handful around town but there's great commanding vision from every angle and the all-round camera system works well. If you happen to have gone for a base manual gearbox model you'll find it very clunky indeed to drive around town. Uh, you need a big slug of acceleration to get everything going and a very definite action is required to shift ratios around. It's all very old school. As usual with a heavy pickup on any Ranger you'll need to leave a bit of extra room for braking particularly if you specify the optional all-terrain tyres rather than the standard all-season rubber. That's um, especially an issue with the cheaper variants which exchange this test wild track models all-round disc brakes for rear mounted drums. Now beyond the city limits that gnarly rubber doesn't give you much grip on damp tarmac and steering feedback with the traction that you do get is severely limited. Still if you do overdo it the traction and stability control systems smoothly rein the vehicle back in. For the highway you'll have to remember that because all double cab ranges exceed 2040 kilograms of unladen mass they have to keep to a lower speed limit on single and dual carriageways. That's an issue with all current pickups except the Isuzu D-Max. For this Ranger automatic cruise control and lane change warning systems are provided in options packs for those likely to be regularly using their Rangers for the highway. This fourth generation Ranger gets a bluff American vibe that customers will like, sharing Ford's global truck design DNA with styling cues borrowed from the brand's US market Bronco SUV and F-150 large pickup. And bulk quite intimidating enough to frighten away fast lane dawdlers. Customers told Ford that this Mark IV model needed to look tough and inspire confidence. It does. As before, the lineup's primarily built around this double cab body style, though a single cab version still offered at the very foot of the range for the few agricultural and building folk who still want it. Now, those people won't want their ranges to look as bling as the wild chat version we have here, and for them, Ford still offers variants with unpainted bumpers and basic 16 inch steel wheels. For the majority of Ranger customers though, bling is king and this subtle shoulder line down the sides incorporates bolder wheel arches that can house big wheels of up to 20 inches in size. We've got 18 inches here. All models get these rather unnecessary fake vents above the front wheel arch and roof rails feature on this particular variant to which you can strap up to 350 kilograms when the vehicle's not moving. It's quite a hunk of automotive real estate over 30 centimeters longer than a Range Rover. In other markets Ford offers a third super cab body style with an occasional rear seat and a related Everest large SUV model but the brand thinks there'd be little demand for those here. This huge radiator grill makes quite a statement doesn't it? Styled with a horizontal bar emblazoned with the Ford badge and varying in look with trim choice. This Wild Trap model gets it with accent colouring, uh, while with the Top Raptor model the bar is replaced with Ford lettering. Either way, this central appendage extends into these eye-catching C-clamp headlights, which can now feature Matrix Tech and their incorporated daytime running lamps. With this variant, uh, a silvered plastic skid plate decorates the lower part of the front bumper. More important though is what you can't see. A hydroformed front end structure creates more space in the engine bay for this Mark IV model's added V6 engines and helps future proof the Ranger for other propulsion technologies. It also opens up the front of this pickup to allow more airflow to the radiator which helps keep running temperatures low when towing or carrying heavy loads. 
From the rear, you might notice this fourth generation model's broader stance and its 50 mm wider track width. The tail lights are designed in harmony with the signature graphics on the front and can be LED illuminated for the first time. And the tailgate design has the Ranger name embossed into the metal. Almost all owners will want the tow bar that's been fitted here. So this Ranger has evolved on the outside. What might be in store in the cab? In hoisting yourself in, you'll appreciate the provided handles on the A pillars and on this wild track version, the running boards that feature too. And once inside, well, you expect to sit high in a pickup and this Ranger certainly perches you commandingly with great all round visibility and airy front seat headroom. This interior is intentionally not quite as plush as the cabin of its Volkswagen Amarok development cousin. Ford says that's because it's uh, been developed with both work and play in mind, but build quality from the South African factory seems just as good. And as with that Volkswagen, there's a level of screen tech now provided that's completely different to anything a Ranger customer would have seen before. We'll get to that in a moment after highlighting some of the other changes here. The front seats, which are wide and comfortable. The curious interior door handles, which are inside the grab handles of the doors. And the new e-shifter gear selector for automatic models like this one, which is a bit like using a mouse on a computer and allows you to change gears just using your thumb while you're driving. All the stuff you regularly touch, like the steering wheel and the center console, seems a pretty high quality. And on this plusher model, which gets orange stitching and embroidered branding on the seats and the passenger side of the dash, the tops of the fascia and the doors are padded with imitation leather. There are even a few pleasing design touches like these little A-pillar B&O speakers and chrome decoration around air vents that reference the style of the front grille, two around the center screen and one at either end of the dash. This is now one of the pricier trucks on the market, but at least you can see where the money's been spent, albeit with the expected harder, scratchier plastics lower down. Analog dials are a thing of the past for the Ranger model line. Even the cheapest variants get this eight inch display. You have to stretch right up to the ritziest platinum or Raptor trim levels to get this screen upgraded to Ford's larger, more satisfying 12.4 inch offering. With the smaller screen that we have here, there's engine cooling temperature and a vertical rev counter on the left next to a digital speedo. On the far right, you view your fuel level and to the left of that, there's a configurable section of the screen that you can customize to preference using Ford's MyView system, which allows you to create shortcuts so that you don't have to dig through the menu lists for the particular information you want. There are plenty of options for things like fuel economy, compass readings, seatbelt activation, off-road status, and trip computer data. You set up the My View by clicking on the lined menu button on the right-hand wheel spoke, then go to the Configure My View screen and press the OK button to select the screens that you like. Anything else that you need to know can be found on this huge portrait format SYNC 4A center screen. It's 10.1 inches in size even in the cheapest models. And if you buy into the range from this wild track trim level or above, you get this even larger 12 inch monitor. It's actually not quite as large as it seems because quite a significant proportion of the bottom of the screen is taken up with permanently displaying climate controls. Unlike in the equivalent Amarok, these are backed up by physical ventilation controls beneath the screen for temperature and fan speed, which also allow you to adjust audio volume. It's a much more user-friendly solution than trying to fish about for virtual screen buttons. This monitor features over-the-air updates, voice control, and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. The display also has a dedicated section for off-roading, providing information on steering angle, vehicle pitch, drive line and roll angles. There's a whole section for towing too, and this screen can provide weather information, details of fuel stops along your route, parking availability at your destination, and a digital owner's manual. You can dim the whole display if you don't want to be distracted by it at night. This piano black finished rotary controller for drive mode selection 
uh, is fitted from this wild track spec upwards. You twist the piano black finished outer bezel to select the drive settings and press the buttons in the center to switch between the usual 2H, 4H, 4L and 4A powertrain options. In the previous generation model, the steering wheel was only height adjustable and not telescopic. Well, that's been dealt with this time round, making it a lot easier to get comfortable. There's now an electronic parking brake too. As for storage space, well, there are two glove boxes. Uh, the lower one is lockable and spacious, and above it is a narrow-lipped storage tray uh, that's slanted down and has a non-slip grippy material at its base so things don't slide out. The upper glove box is just above that tray, and here in the corner of the dash is a pop-out spring-loaded cup holder that's strategically positioned just below this vent so that it can heat or cool your drink. Neat. There's a large lidded center console bin to stash things and it has a 12 volt socket inside. Ford says that this time the door pockets have been designed to carry a bit more, but they still look pretty small and narrow to us. There are cup holders next to the gear selector and you're evidently supposed to stash your phone here in this stowage area at the base of the center stack because a wireless phone charger can feature here and both USB-A and USB-C ports reside just above. Uh, there can also be a high mounted USB uh, located alongside the auto dimming rear view mirror. Ticket clips in the sun visors have been forgotten, but there is an overhead sunglasses compartment. Um, just above this, um, by the way, there's the option of adding six individually fused overhead upfitter switches, which could control aftermarket added electric features such as light bars and beacons. Right, time to take a look in the rear, at which point if you've got a plush or a ranger with these side steps and you've been in the mud, you'll probably find your trouser legs or skirts being decorated with grime as you brush against the step panel getting out. Now this fourth generation model gains 50 millimeters of extra wheelbase length, so there ought to be a bit of extra leg room back here. And sure enough, once inside, there is a little more space for legs and knees. It's hardly palatial, but it's a little better than what you get from most obvious rivals. Central air vents are included, as is a fold-down armrest with cup holders. Isofix child seat fastenings are included for the two outer seating positions. In plusher models like this one, both USB-A and USB-C charge points again feature. There are two coat hooks back here behind your head, and for spirited off-roading, you'll need the provided grab handles, one above each door aperture and one on each B-pillar. As usual with pickups, when you're not using this rear bench, you can lift up the base to access two further storage compartments. Tools are provided beneath the base too. And if you want to take packages inside the cab, you can fold forward this seat backrest, which also allows you to access the jack that sits at the back here. Trim levels start with XL, then XLT, Tremor, Wildtrak, Wildtrak X, and Platinum with the high performance Raptor at the top of the lineup. At the time of filming in winter 2023, prices at the foot of the lineup were starting from around £29,000 excluding VAT. As with the previous model, virtually all Rangers sold here come with this double cab body shape. There are still single cab and single chassis cab options, but they only come with the base XL trim level that few customers will want. XL and XLT models get a simple shift on the fly four wheel drive system and come only with the base 170 PS version of Ford's two litre EcoBlue diesel engine with manual transmission. Now to get that engine in the 205 PS form that we're trying here, where it only comes with the 10 speed auto gearbox, your starting point in the range would be mid-level Tremor trim, priced as we filmed from around 36,000 pounds, excluding VAT. Now here we're trying that 205 PS four-cylinder diesel engine with the trim level that the majority of Ranger customers tend to want, Wildtrak, which accounted for over 60% of sales of the previous generation model and comes with the more advanced full-time E four-wheel drive system that Ford fits to all top Rangers. 
as we filmed. This pickup was priced in this form from around £40,000, excluding VAT. But if you can afford more, around £5,000 more gives you the alternative option of Ford's latest 3-litre V6 EcoBlue to 40 PS diesel. These two more powerful diesel units fill out the rest of the mainstream lineup. A Wildtrak X variant with the 205 PS 2 litre EcoBoo unit and a plush platinum version with the 240 PS 3 litre V6 turbo diesel. Separated out at the very top of the lineup is the High Performance Ranger Raptor, available either with the previous generation model's 210 PS EcoBlue diesel for around £57,000 as we filmed, or with a potent twin-turbo 3.0-litre V6 EcoBoost petrol powertrain at just over £60,000. Either way, drive is via the usual 10-speed auto transmission. Now, you might be wondering about how Ranger pricing compares to an equivalent version of its close development cousin, the Volkswagen Amarok. The answer is that the Volkswagen generally costs around £1,500 more, though that doesn't take account of equipment differences between the two models. The wild track version of this Ford that many owner drivers choose is a more striking thing than its Amarok style spec equivalent. But you could expect the Volkswagen to have a slightly more cultured feel and marginally higher residuals, so it really depends on your priorities. We'd also want to compare against the other most obvious segment rival, Toyota's Hilux. Now, that Toyota undercuts a base Ranger double cab by around £1,000, and the Hilux variant that's closest to this four-cylinder Wildtrap model, the Invincible 2.8 D4D Auto, undercuts it by around £4,000. Even cheaper is the Isuzu D-Max, which in mid-range DL40 double cab auto guys would save you over £5,000 on the wild trap version of this Ford. But again, you'd have to do without a lot of the visual bling that this Ranger brings with it. Talking of saving money, the very cheapest pickup on the market is the Sangyong Musso, which at the time of this test was priced from just under £26,000, excluding VAT in base EX manual form. The Musso offers a similar amount of power, 202 PS, to the top four-cylinder diesel version of this Ranger, but in most of its guises is hobbled by a restricted 1,300mm low bay length that's by far the shortest in the class. The Ranger's low bay length, for instance, is 1,564mm. The only long wheelbase Musso model is the top spec Saracen Plus Auto version that has a 1,600mm low bay length, which cost at the time of this test around £35,000 excluding VAT. Yes, that's a big saving over an equivalent Ranger and you'll get a bit more kit, but the Sanyong's 2.2 litre diesel is far less efficient, so a Musso owner would have to budget for higher running costs. It might also be worth pointing out that the near £50,000 budget required for the plush platinum spec Ranger would nearly be enough to get you the sector's first full EV pickup, the Maxus T90 EV. But that's considerably compromised in terms of driving range and towing ability compared to this diesel model. So those are all your options. If having considered them, you conclude that it is a Ranger that you really want, then you're gonna to need to know just how generous Ford has been in terms of standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. You won't be expecting to be getting terribly much with base XL trim, and you don't. But Ford does throw in its 10.1 inch Sync 4 center screen with voice control and Apple CarPlay Android auto smartphone mirroring, plus an instrument cluster with an eight inch partial TFT LCD display. Plus you get a rear view camera, uh, adaptive cruise control, intelligent speed assist, rear parking sensors, an alarm, and all round mud flaps. In addition, Ford throws in its Ford Pass Connect system, which gives you an embedded modem with an in-vehicle Wi-Fi hotspot. There's also the Ford Pass Pro app, by which you can preheat or pre-cool the cabin before you get to it. Locate the vehicle if you've lent it out. Be advised if a thief is accessing your Ford. Make online service bookings and remotely lock or unlock your Ranger from your smartphone. 
Beyond all these basics though, most Ranger buyers will be wanting a few niceties, which start to be included from the next trim level up, XLT. This gets 16 inch alloy wheels, a terrain management system with a push button selector for different drive modes. Uh, there's a quick clear heated windscreen, uh, LED rear lights, power folding mirrors, front fog lights, and an electrochromic rear view mirror with a USB charging port. If you're happy with that basic XLT package, but want a little more off-road ability and visual aggression, but don't want to stretch your budget towards the top of the range, your dealer will point you to the mid-level Ranger Tremor model. Now this features a re-engineered chassis and suspension with a wider track, uh, increased ground clearance, and Bilstein high-performance position-sensitive dampers as standard. An uprated heavy duty power steering system and off road technologies like rock crawl mode, trail turn assist, and trail control deliver more confidence off road. The increased track, extended arch mouldings, and standard long leg tubular sports bar give the Ranger Tremor a tougher, more adventurous look than the XLT. Cast aluminium side steps, exposed twin front toe hooks, unique bolder grey exterior details, and a darkened grille complete the look. Plus, forward includes a cargo area light and some extra camera safety kit. Next up is the wild track trim level that we have here, and with this, there's quite a lot more. You get these bolder grey painted. 18 inch alloy wheels, LED headlights with signature graphic LED daytime running lights, LED front fog lights, power folding mirrors, keyless entry, and accent coloring for the grille, the wheel arch mouldings, and the front bumper. There's also a slicker rotary dial operated version of the driving mode terrain management system. And at this level in the range, Ford also includes underbody protection, which gives you a front bumper skid plate and an engine and transfer case shield. Plus, there's a 360 degree four zone exterior lighting system that allows you to illuminate all of the vehicle's lights at once. The front dipped headlights, the puddle lights, the low box light, and the license plate lights which is ideal for avoiding trip hazards at night or if you just need the area that you parked in to be lit up to help you put away tools or maybe repair a tire. At this level in the range, there's the choice of standard duty suspension or soft ride suspension. And if you go for the V6 diesel version, you'll also get reverse brake assist and a blind spot information system with cross traffic alert. Inside, with this wild track spec, the SYNC 4 center screen grows to 12 inches in size, and this part lever seat trim, a powered 10-way adjustable driver's seat, vinyl wrapping for the dashboard, LED ambient lighting, a leather-trimmed heated steering wheel, and premium air vents with precision gray bezels. If you like wild track spec, but want a little more than the wild track X trim adds a wider stance, underbody protection, and increased ground clearance. Standard Bilstein high performance position sensitive dampers come included, plus there's a heavy duty terrain pack, uh, an uprated heavy duty power steering system, and off-road technologies like rock crawl mode, trail turn assist, and trail control to deliver more confidence off-road. The Wildtrak X has a unique asphalt black grille surround and bumper H-bar, plus special wheel arch trim and rear bumper finishing, and can be specified with optional matrix LED headlamps with auxiliary lamps in the grille. For the load box, Ford's cargo area management system comes included too. The plushest mainstream model is the Ranger Platinum, identifiable by its unique grille uh, silk chromed exterior highlights, plus there's the option of 20 inch machined face alloy wheels with high gloss ebony detailing. Further premium touches include a soft closed tailgate, roof rails, privacy glass, and signature daytime running lights within the Matrix LED headlamps. Inside, the Ranger Platinum offers premium perforated and quilted leather front seats with 10 way power adjustment, heating, and cooling functions and contrast stitching. 
Plus there's open grained dark maple wood inlays, ambient interior lighting, wireless phone charging, a 12.4 inch digital instrument cluster and a 12 inch center sync for touchscreen controlling an eight speaker B&O audio system. That only leaves the top Raptor trim level, which isn't our focus here, but for reference, apart from its clever Fox live valve damping system, it comes with 17 inch premium ebony painted alloy wheels, dynamic matrix LED headlights, plus much of the spec from platinum trim, including the twin 12 inch screens and the upgraded B&O sound system. Onto options available across the lineup. There's a range of over 150 fully factory backed work, urban and adventure accessories. We'll start with practical features. For the load area, there's an optional power to box, which gives you 12 volt and two 40 volt sockets and can, if required, be built into an optional bed liner load box. If you choose a bed liner, you'll be able to order Ford's useful cargo area management system if your chosen Ranger doesn't have it. There's a spray-in bed liner available or a sport liner bed rug. Now, you might want the bed divider system, which stops smaller items from sliding around. And there's a load bed drawer system, which gives you slide out drawers beneath the raised cargo base. There are bed mounted load crossbars available. And to cover the cargo bay from prying eyes, you might want either a soft tonneau cover or a roller shutter, which can be specified either manually or as in this case, uh, with power assistance. Alternatively, you might also want to add a flexible rack system, a three piece hard tonneau cover, a sliding bed tray or a bespoke utility storage box. As usual with pickups, there are various full hard tops to choose from available in different colors. Uh, Ford offers what it calls a commercial canopy or a more station wagon like stylish canopy. The brand also offers a bespoke tool uh, bike carrier. Uh, obviously, you could choose to add a tow bar too. And if you do, we suggest that you pair it with the optional auto hitch system, which guides you as you reverse the vehicle to meet the trailer that you're about to hitch to. The tow bar can also work with a clever integrated electric trailer brake controller, which proportionally adjusts the braking pressure of the towing vehicle for the trailer's electric brakes, which helps to avoid lockups. And in the unlikely event of your trailer accidentally disconnecting, an instant visual and audible warning is given. Specifically for the Wildtrap models, you can upgrade the audio system to a B&O eight speaker setup, which is what we've got here. And at this level in the range, you can add an active park assist system and bigger 18 or even 20 inch wheels. We've got the 20 inches fitted here. For the Wildtrak X, there's an upgrade pack with matrix LED headlamps, auxiliary grill lights, the B&O audio system, and some extra camera safety kit. Bear in mind that you'll almost certainly be paying your Ford dealer extra for your choice of paint color. The only standard shade is solid frozen white. This test model's Agate Black is one of five metallic options. Plus there's a Cornerstone Lucid Red shade and a speciality Cyber Orange. Wheel arch flares are offered and there are stainless steel sports bars available too. If you like that look, uh, sports bars come included in the optional sport appearance pack, which also includes a silk chrome finished front grille with a bespoke colored center bar, chromed door mirror coverings, and a body colored rear bumper with chrome end caps. Now, individual extras include side steps and covers to protect the headlamps and the rear tail lights. Raptor models can be ordered with a special decal pack. Right, as for safety kit, well, Ford has considerably improved the camera safety tally on this fourth generation Ranger. All versions get pre-collision assist autonomous braking, which combines front camera and grill mounted radar and includes dynamic brake support, forward collision warning, active braking, distance alert and evasive steering assist. There's also a lane keeping system that includes lane keeping alert, a lane keeping aid and road departure warning. 
or rangers get traffic sign recognition and the post collision braking system that if you hit something will hopefully stop you from going on to hit something else. More is added in terms of camera safety kit as you progress up the range. But if your chosen trim level doesn't have the feature you want, then you can choose from a range of optional technology packs to provide it. Here on this test model, for instance, we've got the Technology Package 71, which to the features already mentioned, adds reverse brake assist, which will intervene to stop you from hitting things at low speeds an auto high headlamp system, which dips your headlights for you at night, uh, front parking sensors, a 360 degree camera, a tow hitch with a 13 pin socket, and a blind spot monitor designed to work with a trailer, alerting you if you're about to pull dangerously out into the path of another vehicle. What about standard passive safety features fitted across the range? We'll finish with that. There are lots of airbags. Uh, driver and front passenger bags, side and curtain bags, and driver's knee booster bag. Plus for this Mark IV model, there's a clever far side airbag, which is there to stop the front seat driver and passenger being thrown together in an accident. Should any airbag inflate, there's an e-core system that automatically contacts the emergency services and provides your ranger's GPS location, even if your mobile phone hasn't been connected to the vehicle. As you'd expect, you get the usual electronic system for stability and traction control and braking, of course, which is aided by an electronic brake boost feature designed to reduce the amount of pedal pressure required for braking. The electric brake booster for this uses a sensor located in the brake pedal to read your actions and adjusts to suit your driving style in the moment. What else? Well, there's load adaptive control hill descent control, hill start assist, trailer sway control and rollover mitigation, plus emergency brake lights that illuminate in panic stops. There are of course Isofix rear seat child seat fastenings too, and even a breakdown warning triangle comes included. This Ranger got a five star rating from Euro NCAP with an 84% score for adult occupant protection and safety assistance technologies and a 90% score in the child occupant protection category. To ensure that this fourth generation Ranger can deliver, whether hauling tools to hard to reach locations or taking families and sports equipment on a weekend adventure, uh, Ford engaged with existing pickup truck owners to help develop practical, clever features that make it the company's most versatile, capable Ranger yet. Let's cover off a few of them for you. Starting with this easy lift tailgate, which can be raised and lowered with one hand and is strong enough to deposit weights of up to 200 kilograms on it as part of the loading process. With top platinum spec, a soft closed tailgate mechanism is also fitted. The tailgate doubles as a mobile workbench and its work surface is designed to help owners with professional or DIY jobs. Two clamp pockets concealed by spring-loaded caps in the tailgate are designed to help secure timber or other project materials. While our model's not fitted with a drop-in bed liner, a built-in ruler with 10 millimeter increments makes measuring convenient. We like this rear load box access sidestep too, which makes climbing up into the cargo box from the side much easier and is attached directly to the load box via two steel supports. With other pickups accessing the cargo bay from the side, you have to clamber up on top of a potentially muddy, slippy wheel. Let's get to the stats. Thanks to this Mark IV model's 50mm increase in track, the cargo area has a best-in-class volume of more than 1,200 litres, so we'll now take a full-sized pallet and you can load in a ply sheet flat. There are slots moulded into the bed liner which allow you to make your own load dividers. Removable protective capping prevents excess damage to the tailgate when lifting bikes in and out. And the ground to cargo bay floor height figure is 877 millimeters. 
For this double cab model, the low box length is 1,564 millimeters without a bed liner. It's 2,332 millimeters with the single cab variant. Now with both the body styles, there's 1,584 millimeters of low box width, narrowing to 1,224 millimeters between the wheel arches. And there's 529 millimeters of low box height. Payload capacities aren't quite as impressive. Uh, the base 170 PS diesel models can take between 1,067 and 1,098 kilograms, but this four-cylinder diesel version of this Wildtrak model is limited to 1,037 kilograms, only fractionally more than its predecessor. Yes, that's still above the one-ton threshold for claiming back VAT, but it means that careful calculations will need to be carried out by Ranger Wild Track purchases before fitting optional extras like tonneau covers and roller shutters. That is, though, at least much better than what's achieved by the top Raptor variant which doesn't get near that VAT threshold figure. It's 631 kilogram payload weight, effectively classifying it as a car and making VAT chargeable on its purchase price. Now, as for the weight you can tow with a Ranger, well, choose one of the two more powerful diesels or the single cab model, and you'll be able to lug along up to 3,500 kilograms, a figure that's unbettered in the class. Uh, the base 170 PS diesel double cab versions are towing rated at between 3,420 and 3,450 kilograms, while the Raptor can only tow up to 2,500 kilograms. If your Ranger is heavily laden down, you won't want your cargo moving about. So we'd recommend the improved version of the cargo area management system that we saw on the previous model, optional across the range and standard with either Tremor or Raptor spec, which gives you greater choice when tying down a load. Now here, it's designed with dividers to hold various sized items like uh, timber or toolboxes. Owners can also create smaller compartments to store objects which would otherwise have to go in the cab using a system of ultra strong spring loaded cleats that clip into rails bolted to each side of the cargo box. Now if despite all of this you still manage to lump your goods into the cargo area wrongly, you'll be thankful for the adaptive load control system. This automatically adjusts the suspension so that the vehicle rides level, even if you poorly positioned your cargo or unwisely placed all the weight in one area. As referenced earlier, there are loads of clever features that you can have fitted back here which may or may not come with your chosen Ranger, depending on the spec level or options you've selected. Low box lighting means that setting up or packing away job sites or camping equipment and finding gear in the dark is a lot easier. Here, we've also got zone lighting, which can be controlled via the touchscreen infotainment system inside the vehicle or via the Ford Pass app on your smartphone. Now, zone lighting sees a combination of the headlights, the puddle lamps, the number plate lamps, and the box lighting being set to illuminate a 360 degree area around the truck, or just specific zones, to help safely inspect the area around the vehicle at night. You might also want Ford's power to the box option, which gives you 12 volt sockets and a 400 watt inverter back here so that items like say a, a small oven, uh, an electric cool box, a smartphone or a laptop can all be run from the bed mounted outlet. As for innovations to help carry loads, well Ford has developed a new drop-in bed liner that incorporates functional divider locators so that owners can create their own compartments to store gear that they might otherwise have to carry in the cabin. Dividers can be custom made from timber at home, then installed and removed as required. As a bonus, the improved, a wider molded profile on the bed liner is more comfortable on your knees, is much easier to clean, and also means items are less likely to slip around. What else? 
Well, external tie-down rails offer extra cargo hauling flexibility and are designed to easily fit ratchet straps and ropes, while wild track models like this one are fitted with aluminium extrusions that double as tie-down rails that run the full length of the cargo box. Durable plastic box top and tailgate capping protects the load box edges and tailgate upper edge from damage. That means owners can load equipment into the cargo box without fear of damaging the paint on the top surface of the load box or the tailgate. Extra cargo tie down points on strong steel tube rails provide convenient points to secure loads. Durable flexible load box caps around the sides of the box and across the tailgate conceal structural attachment points for canopies and other aftermarket accessories. Now here we've got the brand's optional powered roller shutter fitted which allows owners to open and close the box cover either using their key fob like this from a switch inside the cargo box or from the instrument panel. We found by the way that this cover's plastic housing takes up quite a bit of storage space towards the rear of the load bed. Accessory channels down the sides of the roller shutter allow customers to easily fit mounts for bikes, kayaks, snowboards, skis or camping gear. The powered roller shutter includes ice brake and anti-pinch functions for extra convenience and protection. You might also want to take stuff on the roof. Uh, standard rooftop channel mounts allow easy fitment of roof accessories including racks or a platform. This Ranger's roof load limits, by the way, are up to 350 kilograms static and 85 kilograms on the move. That'd be great for camping excursions, which might also be aided by this Ranger's added dual battery capability, which allows owners to add a leisure battery under the bonnet for an extra power source out in the wilds. Right, enough with the load area briefing. What about running costs? Well, the diesel engines offered here show no sign of efficiency gains through any sort of electrification, which is a little disappointing given that this model's uh, Toyota Hilux arch rival is already available with a 48 volt mild hybrid system and in future may be offered with hydrogen power too. Still, this range of stats are reasonably class competitive in terms of economy and emissions. In the mainstream lineup, the figures range from 33.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and up to 220 grams per kilometer of CO2. That's for the XLT spec manual 2 litre 170 PS model, right up to 27.2 miles to the gallon and 264 grams per kilometer of CO2. That's for the 3 litre V6 diesel with Wild Track X trim. Now we've been averaging about 30 miles to the gallon during this test. You'd be closer to 25 miles to the gallon in regular day-to-day -day use with the V6 diesel. Strangely, across the lineup, engine stop-start technology is only standard from high up wild track X trim upwards. It ought to be standard on all models. Predictably, you'll need to pay for your pleasures with the top performance Raptor model. In 3 litre V6 EcoBoost petrol form, combined economy is 20.5 miles to the gallon and CO2 emissions are up at 315 grams per kilometre. On all ranges, a fuel economy meter on the dash screen helps you monitor your frugality, or lack of it. If that's not good enough, and you don't mind the thought of fueling from the green pump, then you can talk to your dealer about the PHEV version that Ford has developed, which wasn't yet on sale at the time of this test in winter 2023. The Ranger plug-in hybrid combines a 2.3 litre Ford EcoBoost petrol engine with an electric motor and a rechargeable battery system. When fully charged, a rather unremarkable EV range of up to 28 miles is promised. What else? Well, like all Fords, you get a 12-year anti-perforation package and a year of Ford assistance breakdown cover. Though the Ranger is sold at Ford's van centres rather than the, at the company's car dealers, it, somewhat annoyingly, has the Blue Oval brand's uh, usual three-year 60,000-mile car warranty rather than the three-year 100,000-mile warranty that applies to this maker's commercial vehicles. Those van dealers, the brand calls them transit centres, and there are around 110 of them around the UK, 
offer extended opening hours and specialist workshops, tools, equipment and staff, plus round-the-clock transit 24 aftercare. Right, service intervals for all two-litre EcoBlue engines are every two years with an annual inspection or every 12,500 miles, whichever comes first. The three-litre V6 petrol and diesel models need service visits every 12,500 miles or every two years, whichever comes first. Uh, an optional Ford Protect Premium plan will uh, also allow you to prepay for servicing for up to two or three years in advance. The instrument screen has a selectable readout that tells you engine hours, idling hours and percentage oil life and also a vehicle maintenance section that gives you AdBlue info and tyre pressures. Ford says the bespoke shock absorbers of the top Raptor variant have been tested to last at least 100,000 miles with normal use. Well, drive like they do in the brand's Raptor promotional video and you're probably going to need to replace them somewhat sooner than that. On to insurance groups. XL and XLT models are rated at Group 39E. Uh, the Ranger Tremor is Group 41E and four-cylinder diesel Wildtrak and Wildtrak X variants are rated at Group 42E. A V6 diesel Wildtrak rates at Group 44E. A Ranger Platinum rates at Group 45E. A Raptor Diesel is Group 41E and a V6 Petrol Raptor is Group 42E. You want to know about residual values given the substantial outlay being required here. Well, according to industry experts CAP, this four-cylinder diesel wild track variant after three years and 30,000 miles would retain 57% of its original value, which is reasonably class competitive. All Rangers, except the Raptor, are classified as light commercial vehicles, so at the time of this test in winter 2023, incurred a flat road tax rate of £320 a year. As for benefiting kind tax, at the time of this test, for all Rangers except the Raptor, this was rated at £66 a month for 20% taxpayers and £132 a month for 40% taxpayers. Finally, because this is classified as a Ford commercial vehicle, it comes with Ford's telematic system, which will allow company managers to monitor vehicle performance, keep track of where the vehicle is, how it's being used and how it's running. You can't deny that this fourth generation Ranger is a thoroughly engineered product. But is it the first Ford pickup to truly approach market leadership? We think it might be. It's safe, spacious, clever, able to carry large loads and has engines that get the job done. Whether the need is for active family weekends or simply to carry workmates with their kit and tools, this rugged, do almost anything, automotive Swiss army knife seems to have it covered. From the back streets of Bangkok to the logging trails of Liberia, you'll find rangers earning their keep. But the step forward here isn't really a rugged one. This Ford was always tough to break. It's in packaging, design and aesthetics. True, maybe the cabin isn't quite as car-like as the Blue Oval would like us to think, but it's a big step forward for a vehicle of this kind, aided by technology that'll see Japanese competitors having to play catch-up. But not beneath the bonnet. At a time when its closest competitor, Toyota's Hilux, is introducing 48 volt mild hybrid technology and experimenting with hydrogen power, it doesn't seem as if Ford and its Volkswagen development partner have done quite enough here on the engine front, though the introduction of a plug-in hybrid variant will be a first for the segment. And of course, there's nothing quite like the Raptor performance model. Aside from powertrains, though, everything here has been really very thoroughly covered off. We particularly like the clever load compartment ideas, the sidestep, the cargo bay lighting, and the fact that there's a, a much wider range of more useful accessories than any other pickup can offer. It's all very impressive. When it all comes down to it, the right tool can make child's play of men's work and if you're looking for the best all-round contender in the pickup sector right now then this is the right tool job done